<laughs> everyone. Uh, my name is Ricky Salter. I work at Cloudera. I'm doing a talk on uh, Impala, which is a modern SQL engine for Apache Hadoop. Um, so quick little bit about me. Uh, I'm a developer on the data platform team here at Cloudera based in Raleigh. Our office is literally across the street. <laughs> and uh, I'm an Impala and Hadoop enthusiast um, as my side job. <laughs> and I'm also a uh, contributing author to the up, up and coming Impala in Action book, uh, which is a, currently a Meep uh, book right now. You can, you can get it online. And of course, I have to start out with a little slide about uh, Cloudera, the company. Uh, so we were formed in 2008 from uh, a bunch of uh, Google, Facebook, and Yahoo engineers. Uh, we were the first distribution uh, uh, for Apache Hadoop that was released. And we employ more than uh, 70 of the committers, PMC members, and contributors. That should probably update, be updated. We have definitely have more than that these days. Uh, 15 projects were founded by Cloudera uh, employees. Uh, we have a bunch of books and thousands of nodes under management of our company. And we also create the uh, Cloudera Manager interface, which I highly recommend if you want to play with Hadoop. Um, it's the best way to manage a Hadoop cluster and learn how to analyze the data as opposed to managing a cluster. Right, so here's a quick agenda of what we're going to go over. Uh, first, we're going to start with a little overview on Hadoop. Like, what, what is it? I'm sure if you guys were at the last talk, you probably know a little bit more about Hadoop these days. Uh, but then we're going to dive into what Impala is, uh, go over the uh, user view of how a user is going to view Impala. Uh, then we'll talk about the architecture, scaling, and then performance. And last but not least, we will talk about the roadmap and what's coming up to Impala. So first, Apache Hadoop. What is it? It is a platform for uh, storing any amount of data uh, and processing that data in, in place. Uh, the, the, uh, the file system that Apache Hadoop uses, HDFS, is a distributed fault-tolerant and scalable file system. Uh, so if a node were to die, your data is not lost. Uh, in, in, uh, in addition, there's a computation engine called MapReduce, which allows you to uh, process that data in place in the file system um, in a scalable way uh, without, um, without uh, reading data over the network. You're instead reading it straight from disk. <coughs> yes, so uh, moving on. Great, so what's wrong with MapReduce? Um, so MapReduce has been a fundamental piece of Hadoop for quite some time. Uh, why, are we, why are we not using it for Impala? Um, and a lot, a lot of our uh, workloads are moving away from MapReduce. Uh, well, it's batch orientated, it's high latency, and not all paradigms fit. Um, so uh, back in the day when MapReduce was first introduced to the platform, it, it made sense. Uh, the platform was not used for uh, quick, quick analysis. It was meant for analyzing huge amounts of data and then, okay, I'll get my answer in a couple days or a couple hours, which is perfectly fine. Uh, but nowadays, we want to have those large data sets, dispersed data sets, and we want to run queries and get a result back in a few seconds, because uh, we want to maybe feed a Tableau report, for example. Uh, and minutes to hours is not acceptable. Um, so with Impala, we had to circumvent the um, current uh, processing engine, which was MapReduce. Uh, and we implemented a, a different engine, which we're going to be going over. So what about Hive? If you've heard about Hive, um, that is a SQL engine that, uh, when you write SQL, it converts the SQL into a series of MapReduce jobs. Uh, back, I think it was in 2007, it was invented by Facebook. They had a ton of SQL engineers, but they didn't have anybody who could just write Java uh, that was also an analyst. So they wrote this engine called Hive that took SQL queries and then converted it to Java MapReduce for the analysts. That way they could run SQL jobs uh, without having to, it was much easier to create this uh, processing engine rather than teach a thousand SQL guys Java, you know, which would have been very difficult to do. Uh, so that is kind of how Hive came to be. Um, it's currently still being used uh, quite a lot uh, and we still recommend it for doing batch oriented jobs. Uh, but it's not a job that was, or it was not an engine designed for quick real-time queries. Um, so uh, Impala took a totally different approach and we built the engine from the ground up to be fast. So what is Impala? So Impala is a general purpose SQL engine. Um, it's meant for analytical workloads. It's linearly scalable, meaning uh, if you want to add more nodes, 
your queries will get faster. If you need, to, if you need more storage, you add more nodes. Um, it can handle queries that run from milliseconds to hours, and it can handle thousands of concurrent queries. Uh, one of the uh, goals of Impala was that we know that if you have a 30 node Hadoop cluster, chances are there's not just one person uh, running queries on it. There's gonna be multiple people running queries on it, maybe hundreds of people. Um, so we built the engine with the idea in mind that we, we can have all these concurrent queries running. We wanna uh, be able to share resources intelligently. It runs directly in Hadoop or on Hadoop. Um, it's compatible with multiple storage managers. Uh, the main one is HDFS, which is the Hadoop distributed file system. Um, it, uh, Impala will run on every node that runs Hadoop, so you don't need additional nodes. You just, it's just like any other processing engine. You just install it, and it's a, a daemon that runs on every node that has data. Um, and it can read all these uh, widely uh, used file formats for Hadoop, um, so like RC file, sequence file, and we'll go over um, some of the um, file formats that it supports. Uh, it's high performance, so it's a true MPP query engine. Um, so a lot of the design decisions from Impala were borrowed from um, MPP query engines that have been being uh, written for years. Um, a lot of those uh, paradigms still fit, uh, even in the big data world. Um, so the engine was uh, written from, uh, from scratch in C++ instead of Java. Uh, we use runtime code generation using LLVM IR uh, compiler infrastructure. That allows us to essentially uh, take a query, a SQL query, and compile it down to um, machine code, um, like you wrote the query in assembly. Um, so that, that's a, one of the other pieces of our uh, engine. Uh, in addition, we have an I.O. manager uh, that uh, will efficiently read from disk. Um, and give you the most high, highest performance uh, from disk using the aggregate throughput of all, of all uh, spindles. <coughs> and it's completely open source. You can go on the, our GitHub page and um, fork it or download it and check it out. So let's go over the, like, the user view. Like, how does a user see Impala? Um, well, it runs as a distributed service. Like I said, it it's runs on every node that has data in your Hadoop cluster. Uh, it's truly distributed uh, in that any of the Impala daemons can accept a query, uh, analyze a query, and then uh, coordinate it. So there's not a master node in Impala, for example. Uh, there's no single point of failure. It's highly available. Um, there's not one node in Impala that if it goes down, the cluster goes down. Um, it's, it's a fully distributed engine. And you can submit queries using your familiar tools like, uh, with like JDBC, ODBC, which then means you can plug tools like Tableau on top uh, or click, click View or anything like that. Uh, we also have like a shell and uh, we have a Hue interface uh, that you can uh, execute queries from. And every query that gets executed uh, will be distributed to nodes that have relevant pieces of the data. So if you are querying a table that's only kind of small, only some fragments will go to nodes that have the actual portion of the data. It might not be ran over the entire data set, or the entire cluster, rather. And it uses the same Metastore as Hive. So you can actually install uh, Impala, and then you immediately have access to all the tables that you were querying in Hive, except that your queries will now run much faster. <clears throat> there is no Impala format. That's <laughs> one thing, key thing to remember. Um, and, and it really makes this uh, engine so special, is that there is not a, uh, a format that this uh, in the, uh, the Impala requires. For example, in like Postgres or MySQL, when you create a table, you insert rows into the database. Those rows then get uh, written to its storage manager uh, and its highly uh, efficient uh, row format, uh, in, uh, file format. Impala lets you analyze data in place um, so you can actually dump like tons of text data into HDFS and then immediately query it with Impala. Um, so this data could just be uh, a few hundred rows or a few hundred columns of comma separated data that you normally would have imported into the database. Instead with Impala you can just dump it into HDFS and then analyze it in place in its raw format, full fidelity. And here are the uh, file formats that we support. Um, so I bolded the one that I recommend the most, which is Parquet. Um, that's a high-performance columnar format that uh, is 
uh, efficient at doing analytics. Um, so it's, it's very good at, uh, if you have a, a table that has many columns, uh, we'll go over a little bit more on Parquet towards the end of the uh, presentation, talk about what a column or format is and why you want to use it for analytics. Uh, but in addition, we support other formats. So we have RC file support, Avro, sequence, and of course text. Um, text, is, text and Parquet are probably two of the most common formats used in, the, uh, in, in Impala. And we also support compression. Um, so we recommend Snappy, and we use it by default on most uh, write operations. Uh, it's fast, gives you great compression. But we also support like Gzip, Bzip2, and LZO. Um, but highly recommend Snappy. Uh, it's it's uh, really efficient at doing decompression of data. So the SQL standards. <laughs> this is a uh, you know there is no real uh, SQL standard other than the ones that's on Wikipedia. You know, <laughs> and lets you know like what you need to do to form to a certain standard. But most databases uh, implement most of the features and then add some other kind of goodies to it. Uh, we have SQL 92. Uh, we have some SQL 2003. Uh, a lot of our um, a lot of our capabilities are very similar to Hive QL, uh, which is the Hive query engine. Uh, it's pretty much the same thing as SQL. There's not really any big differences. Uh, we support windowing functions. We have other goodies like into, uh, insert into select. Um, we also have the ability to write native uh, UDFs. So if you have some proprietary uh, um, processing that you want to do and you want it to be highly efficient and it doesn't make sense to express it in SQL, you can actually write a Java UDF or uh, what I recommend is write it in C++. Uh, and we will actually do co-generation with that using LLVM. Uh, also, very soon we'll have Python support. Uh, so we have a project called Impila, and uh, very soon we will let you uh, write uh, uh, functions in uh, Python, and we will compile that using the Numba uh, library and ship it straight to the server uh, into, or into the Impala daemons, uh, and they will run uh, your snippet of Python code on them. Uh, but uh, that will be compiled down to LLVM. Uh, code as well. And we're continuing to add SQL functionality. A lot of the, uh, the latest release 2.0, we added a bunch of new SQL functionality. We're going to probably uh, start focusing more on um, performance and stability. Um, but we have a lot of the um, capabilities right now that we want. So yeah, the Impala architecture. Let's go over like uh, the, the overall architecture of like if you were to to run Impala, what should you know? You know? We have three major daemons that we're going to go into um, in detail. So we have the Impala daemon, the state store, and the catalog server. First, let's talk about the Impala daemon. This is the, the heart of Impala. Um, every query that gets executed is sent to an Impala daemon, um, and it will do its portion of uh, computation. Like, like I said before, it runs on every data node in HDFS. Uh, every uh, daemon is capable of accepting a query uh, and analyzing it and then uh, coordinating it to all the other uh, nodes in the cluster. Uh, it has three layers inside of a, uh, in the daemon. There's a planner. That's what accepts a query and then figures out, like, is this even a proper SQL query? Okay, well, I'm going to then hand it to the coordinator, which then uh, will take the query and uh, distribute it among among all the other nodes in the cluster. And then every node, uh, which has an executor, will receive a portion of the query and then do its uh, analysis on its uh, small portion of the data. Uh, we also have the state store. Uh, that's a single service that runs on the cluster. Uh, it, will, it basically handles uh, overall health. Uh, it, it will uh, talk to the Impala daemons, do heartbeat checks, make sure uh, daemons are live, uh, call them dead if they don't respond. Uh, this isn't a, a uh, single point of failure. If the state store dies, you can still uh, send queries. But if a node were to die, uh, the other nodes in the cluster won't really know about it. Um, so essentially, uh, you can still run your cluster, but it'll become uh, the, the state of the cluster will become stale um, until you can just restart the state store. And by default in Cloud Air Manager, if your state store were to crash, it'll just start back up again. Um, and it's a soft state, so once this, uh, the state store comes up, it talks to every node and then reconstructs the state based on the heartbeats. There's also uh, the newest addition to the Impala architecture, which is the metadata and catalog server. 
Uh, this is a single server that runs on the cluster that talks to the Hive Metastore and caches, um, caches like uh, table uh, metadata. And what I mean by table metadata is if I were to create a table um, in Impala and I say, there's a, there's a directory in HDFS that's got a bunch of text uh, data, like comma separated data, um, essentially what the metadata does is, is a uh, piece of data that allows you to define what the structure of the file looks like. So you could say the first column is a bunch of strings. The second column is perhaps uh, a person's age. That's going to be an integer, uh, you know, and so on. So you can define a structure um, that kind of defines a, a, a rough, like, what the data kind of looks like. And the catalog server, which is actually really cool, is it propagates metadata changes. So if you were to add a partition or if you were to add a column to a table uh, through Impala, it will propagate all the uh, metadata to every node in the cluster. That way everyone know, has, it comes to an agreement of what the data <coughs> looks like. So let's, let's see like, what happens when you submit a query. Uh, so here is an overall like, kind of architecture of what Impala looks like on your cluster. So each of these are an Impala daemon. Um, these are the layers I talked about, the planner, the coordinator, the executor. And then here is the storage managers that sit underneath. And you can, you can query data in HBase, or you can query data straight out of HDFS. Um, so pretty much your user is going to send a SQL request using some SQL application, JDBC, ODBC. They're going to send that to one of the Impala daemons. That's going to come in onto the planner. And then the planner is going to analyze the query, make sure it's you know, correct and not uh, misspelled or something. Uh, it's going to create a single node plan, and then it's going to pass that plan down to the coordinator. The coordinator is then going to partition that query where it makes sense, and then send portions of work to the executor engines on the other daemons. When, when the executor receives a portion of the work, it will do, uh, it'll talk to whatever storage manager um, that it needs to, to get the data. So in this case, uh, the two Impala daemons are reading data from HGFS. Um, the middle one looks like it's reading data out of HBase, and there's probably a join going on, so it's propagating uh, the, the table over to the other nodes to do like some sort of hash join. Uh, once, once the results are done, it will stream the results back to the original coordinator, which will then send the results back to the the user. This all happens within a few, mil, a few hundred milliseconds to a couple seconds to whatever, like hours, depending on how large your data set is. So let's, let's see what's under the hood. <laughs> this is kind of like where uh, Impala gets its speed, is its execution engine. It's written in C++ for minimal execution overhead. It uses uh, in-memory tuples, uh, fixed width, uh, and fixed offsets to store the data, and uh, uses like a bunch of CPU intrinsics and, and stuff like that for even faster text parsing. Uh, and we use the LLVM architecture, uh, compiler infrastructure for compiling each query, which we're going to go over here in a second. So what's runtime code generation? Um, well, we use runtime code generation for big loops. Uh, so part of our code that constantly gets iterated over, we want to make that as efficient as possible. Uh, so we use LLVM to essentially compile a query down to uh, it's almost like assembly level code, um, as if you wrote the code in assembly. Um, it's, it makes things uh, a lot more efficient. It unrolls loops, it inlines function calls, um, there's no dead code, and it minimizes branching, which we'll see here in a second. So here's like an example of like a hot code path. So this is a function that would get called, like if you were to write a SQL engine, this is a function that you would probably have to write eventually. This materializes some data from disk into in, an in-memory tuple. Um, this is what it looks like. You would essentially go through each offset and you would say, is this a Boolean? Okay, I'm gonna parse it as a Boolean. Is it an integer? All right, I'm gonna parse it as an integer. Um, well, with, uh, with Impala, what we do is when you submit a query, we already know what the data looks like. So we understand, like, okay, you're going to access this column, this column, this column. That's a string. That's an integer. That's a boolean. Uh, so we can actually compile that query as if you wrote it yourself um, in, in code. And we automatically know, like, the first, um, the first element in the array is an integer, the second is a boolean, and the third is an, another integer. Um, so there's no, there's no, like, conditions over here. Uh, that essentially make, makes uh, the, there's no branching, for example. Um, 
and it makes the query run a lot faster. Normally, this isn't that big of a, a win if you were to write like a small like query engine, but when you're iterating billions of times with big data, you have rows that are billions to trillions of rows, uh, this function gets called that many times. So as, if you can make that even a little bit more efficient, that helps a lot. And as you can see, was, was it worth it? It was. <laughs> so here's a query on a terabyte data set with code generation off, and then here's one with code generation on. Um, essentially, more than, uh, it's more than 50% faster. Uh, and it's going to be more exaggerated as the data sets get larger. Um, so there's a 100 gig one too, and then one terabyte, and that just gets even more, uh, it, there's more of a benefit to using LLVM when you're dealing with larger data sets. The other part of Impala that makes it so special is the IO manager. Um, so we essentially want to maximize this throughput on the cluster. Uh, it's designed to take the aggregate throughput. So when you're running uh, Impala, you have multiple nodes, uh, and each node will have multiple disks, essentially. You should not run a Hadoop cluster with one disk in each node. You can, but it's not really a good idea. Uh, so Impala, uh, it, it's known from the beginning, like a lot of the bottlenecks uh, for data analysis is reading the data off Rust to memory. Um, so we wanted to make sure whatever engine that we wrote can take advantage of all the disk throughput combined. Um, and, and, and really, the I.O. manager, its job is to make sure a disk is doing work at all times. Uh, we have a, th a single thread spun up for each disk in, in, the, uh, in the node. And then we have a single I.O. manager on top of it, which will service requests from queries. And we'll, we'll show, I'll show you the uh, architecture of that here in a second. It supports blocking and non-blocking I.O. So here is a Impala daemon that's running on your cluster. Like I said, if you have 15 data nodes, you have 15 of these running. Um, each Impala daemon has a single I.O. manager and multiple threads in it that are reading from disk. Uh, when a query, a query fragment is just a piece of a query that's being ran on the cluster, uh, the query fragment talks to the I.O. manager and says, hey, I need this portion of the data from disk. It will then read it from disk and also do prefetching. So while the query fragment is doing some analysis of the data, the I.O. manager is already prefetching from disk what it's going to probably want next, put it in the buffer. Um, this is you know common common thing that people do uh, to make I.O. a little bit more efficient. So Impala and Dremel. Uh, so I don't think a lot of people talk about Dremel anymore. Uh, probably a little bit more older news. Uh, but Dremel was a research paper that came out of Google. Um, and it, does, it defined a columnar storage format and a aggregation engine that they used internal at, at Google. Um, the, the engine itself um, that does the aggregations is basically Impala. And then the columnar format that, it, that the research paper described um, is basically Parquet, which is what I talked about earlier, which is a columnar format. Uh, and I'm going to go over that here in a second. Uh, Impala is... Uh, the aggregation engine, uh, very similar to the Dremel aggregation engine, but it contains way more stuff. It's actually more similar to like the, the Google F1 query engine. Uh, the lead architect of Impala uh, helped work on that project at Google. He came over to Cloudera and wanted to help make an engine very similar, but open source. Uh, that, okay, yes, and Parquet, <laughs> sorry. Uh, so what is Parquet? It's a container format um, that allows you to use other like serialization engines like, Park, uh, like Avro, Thrift, and Proto, Protobufs. Um, it was jointly developed by Twitter and Cloudera. Um, and essentially, it's a, uh, in a columnar format that allows you to store data in binary format. Uh, so you can store bo uh, booleans, integers, and doubles in binary format. So when you read it, there's no uh, deserialization kind of like cost. Um, and, and then we'll talk about what the benefits are of a column refer here in a second. Um, it also has extensible like value encodings. So if you're writing a bunch of integers that are kind of within the same range, instead of writing each integer at the same time, it, it may use an encoding format like a delta encoding, which will go take the delta between the two uh, integers and then write that instead. Uh, so when you read the data, you can like reconstruct the original values, but while storing much less data overall. So what is columnar storage? So over here is like a table. You would probably see if, if you're writing like a, if you're creating a SQL table in any database. Uh, you have a few columns. You have some rows in those columns. 
Um, in a row major format, which is essentially most databases, you have each column store contiguous. So if you were writing this row, A1, B1, C1, A2, B2, C2, A3, B3, C3, those are each row is stored contiguous of each other. Uh, with a column major format, you are instead taking the columns and storing them next to each other. And there's a lot of benefits to this. Uh, for analytics, this is the right way to store data. Um, you are usually doing aggregates over certain columns. So with a column major format, you can actually skip reading irrelevant columns. Um, so with a row, row major, you have to read all the data. And then you have to prune out the data that doesn't make sense to analyze. You still read it from disk. Uh, but with column, uh, with a column major format, you can actually take, you can say, I'm only reading the age of somebody, or I'm only reading the salary column. Um, so you can actually go only to the salary column and read that data. If you have hundreds of columns, you are pruning a ton of data. Uh, the best I.O., or the most efficient I.O., is one that never happens at all. Now, kind of, that's kind of where column or, uh, storage really excels. In addition, there's inherent benefits to storing data that are alike next to each other. Uh, compression automatically is just better because you're storing integers next to each other. You're storing strings next to each other. Uh, so you don't have uh, weird like dispersed data, uh, data types sitting next to each other. Uh, in, in addition, like I said, the encoding formats, you can do some pretty cool tricks uh, when, you have a, when you can guarantee alike data uh, contiguous of each other. So the real question is, does Impala scale? <laughs> and it totally does. Uh, Impala loves memory. Uh, you don't have to have a lot of memory in your cluster, but if you do, Impala will use a lot of memory. It'll buffer a lot of things in memory and do analysis where it makes sense in place um, in memory. Uh, it will use all your disks. So if you have a cluster and you're wondering like how many disks do I want, just fill up your node with disks. Uh, like <laughs> 12 disks uh, on each node is not unheard of. That's usually very common and recommended. Um, Memory-wise, uh, uh, I think we recommend like 128 gigs each node, but you can, you can run with 32 gigs. I ran a cluster with 48 gigs of memory for quite some time, and it worked pretty well. And it scales linearly. So if you double the size of your cluster, expect your queries to run twice as fast. Um, if you add twice as many users, expect your queries to run twice as slow. <laughs> so it kind of works both ways. <clears throat> So here's some bench uh, or some scale kind of testing we did. So if we have double the hardware with the same amount of users, uh, you can see the query time start to pretty much uh, cut in half. Uh, what's if double the users, double the hardware? Well, our query times stay about the same. That makes sense. Double the hardware and double the data. The times are pretty much the same. Like, this is all. This is what you want to see. If you say you're linearly scalable, these are the kind of results that you want. <clears throat> so benchmarking, the fun part. So we actually uh, recently did a benchmark uh, comparing Impala, Hive, Spark SQL, which is a kind of new kid on the block uh, SQL engine for Hadoop, uh, and then Presto, which is a engine that came out of Facebook about a year or two, a uh, year and a half ago. So here's the specifications of the data set. We used a 15 terabyte data set, 21 nodes. Uh, each node had two processors, 12 cores, uh, and they're the Intel Xeon um, E52630. Uh, each node had 64 gigs of RAM, which is actually really cool because really this is like a, this is a commodity node these days. Like you can get these fairly cheap, 12 disks, um, and the data set formats that we use. For Impala, we use Parquet. For Presto, we use RC file, which is very similar to Parquet, uh, but not really that efficient. It's, it was the original columnar format for Hadoop. The uh, reason why we use Presto uh, or we use RC file for Presto is because it doesn't support Parquet. In Hive, we use its optimized columnar format called ORC. And for Spark SQL, it supported Parquet, so we use that. All right, so uh, single user response times. This is a single user on your cluster. This is pretty much unheard of. Unless you're a really special snowflake at your, at your company, you're probably not going to be the only user using a cluster. Uh, <laughs> so these are a, a best case scenario on your cluster. Um, and uh, the lower the bar, the better. Uh, blue bars are Impala. Um, these are TPCDS queries. So these are industry standard queries uh, that most companies would run, something very similar. Uh, 
These are the type of queries. So we have an interactive queries buckets, and then a reporting, and then deep analytics. Um, by by uh, as you can see, like most of the other engines are about three times slower on single users, up to about seven times slower. Yeah, so uh, more, uh, more like practical use case is like when you have multiple users using your cluster. This is where Impala starts to really shine. Um, so it was designed with concurrent workloads in mind. Um, and as you can see, like Impala stays pretty relatively fast, even with 10 users running. Uh, the second bar shows if you were running 10 users as opposed to a single user. Uh, Presto gets really slow. It gets about 27 times slower. Uh, when you start adding more users to it. And Tez also does, uh, starts to increase quite dramatically. Uh, it was 15 times slower, and then it goes to about 18 times slower. Really, the, the best engine, the most comparable engine is Spark SQL, which is relatively new. And here's my favorite benchmark slide, really, because this is, this is the slide that you can give somebody, and it makes real sense. Um, you know, SQL queries, when they run fast, that's great. Uh, but when you can show how many queries you can pump through a system in an hour compared to the others, that really makes, uh, I think, a bigger difference. Um, so you can pump like 23. In this case, we can pump over 2,000 queries an hour. And the, the next closest competitor is Spark SQL at 260. Five, six. So Impala 2.0, that's our newest release. We just released it, I think it was last week. Um, we added uh, SQL 2003 compliant analytic functions, so you can do partition, rank, lead, lag. Uh, we also added disk-based aggregations. Uh, this is a huge uh, improvement. Uh, this allows you to spill to disk uh, when you're doing joins or aggregations if you were to run out of memory. Uh, it used to be uh, that you could use the aggregate uh, memory of your cluster. So you could use all the memory combined. That's, that's the biggest data set that you could put into memory. Uh, but uh, now, if you were to spill, it will actually go to disk. Uh, so there is no query that will ever run out of memory these days. Uh, we also added correlated subqueries. So you can do subqueries within like a where clause. And we added two new additional data types. We have a really bright uh, roadmap. We are iterating quite fast. Uh, we have a pretty big team at Cloudera working on this project. Um, we're adding nested data very soon. I think it'll be in the, um, maybe the, not the next major release, uh, but the one after that. That'll let you uh, analyze using SQL nested data structures like maps or structs or arrays, things like that. Uh, that's really cool. So you'll essentially be able to uh, analyze JSON data in place without having to um, normalize the data. Uh, we're also adding the ability to merge updates. So like I said, Impala is a bring your own kind of data uh, and then analyze it on top. It doesn't, it doesn't uh, support updating rows. HDFS is an immutable file system. Uh, so it doesn't really, there's no way to really update data in place, which is actually really nice uh, in, in a lot of ways. Um, but we're going to add the ability to merge data together um, and then invalidate some rows or something. Uh, we're also adding like set operators. Uh, HBase CRUD support's coming eventually. That will let you update data in HBase using SQL. And we'll have uh, table functions. And really, the, this is my favorite bullet point, is the intranode paralyzed joins and aggregations. It's hard to believe from the benchmarks before, but all of our, par our joins and aggregations are actually single threaded. Um, soon to be, we'll be paralyzed on each node. Uh, that will give us a really big performance advantage um, and help us, you know, create the, or widen the gap between the other engines like, once more. Uh, also, we want to support querying data straight from S3 directly. Yeah, and uh, if you have future requests, you can totally voice them. We have an uh, Impala user kind of uh, group, uh, Impala-user at Cloudera. And uh, let us know, you know, what feature is important to you. If you have any issues, uh, our developers are incredibly active on that group, so you'll likely get a response maybe from the guy who created Impala. <laughs> yes. So if there's any questions, please let me know. <laughs> there's a question yeah, back there. The splitting and partitioning work so you can kind of make sure all your different nodes have right, that's, the right, that's a good that's a good question. So we yeah, 
<laughs> we rely on HDFS for that part. So when you write a file to HDFS, let's say I have a terabyte file and I need to dump it into HDFS. Uh, when you write HDFS, it will break it up into smaller blocks. And those blocks are automatically um, balanced to each node in the cluster. Um, so when you run a query and you say, I'm look I want to run a query on this file, it knows that th this file is actually this 100,000 blocks of data. And then with those 100,000 blocks of data, it knows each node that has that portion of the data. And then it will uh, it'll partition the query where it makes sense that each node is doing a small portion of the work or it's you know, equal share of the work. Question? Yeah, so uh, it's a uh, truly distributed engine. So uh, any node that goes down, um, it will not take it will not take the cluster down. If a query is running and a node goes down, the query will fail. But you'll have to just resubmit it. Um, usually, this is not a problem because most queries are running in a few seconds, <coughs> essentially. Uh, but yeah, the uh, there is no um, single point of failure. So there's a catalog server that sits in the front. And it will propagate the change. Like if there's a change to the metadata, it will send uh, the update, the delta to the, each node. But when, in, uh, when you submit a query to the uh, Impala daemon, if it doesn't have the metadata already cached in memory, it talks to the catalog server. It will give, its me uh, give metadata where it makes sense, like where, the, where uh, portions of the blocks are at and things like that. And then it'll cache it locally. Question? Yes. Does it run at runtime or? Runtime? Yes, it's uh, just in time uh, code generation. So every time you run a query, um, you can actually get a profile and you can actually see how long it took to generate the code. Uh, but when you run a query, since it takes a query and it knows exactly what data set you're looking at, what columns you want to read, it will compile a program just in time. So usually a few milliseconds or a few hundred milliseconds. And then also you showed that. Yes, so in the uh, in Polish shell, you can actually uh, turn off and on a lot of the features, uh, one of them being code generation. So if you have a query that's touching a very small data set and somehow the query is taking, the real part of the query is taking uh, a shorter amount of time than it took to compile the code to run it, you can turn code generation off and you might get even a, a further speed up. But you can turn, yeah, you can turn features like that off and on. <clears throat> yes, so you can, if you want to turn code generation off permanently, you can actually do that through Cloud Air Manager. You can set default query options. Um, other, otherwise, you can uh, do it on a per query basis. You can say that this query only, I don't want you to do runtime code generation. Yep. Do you support the partition of the data? I was wondering to aggregation That's a good question. Yeah, we, we do support uh, partitioning of data. Um, that's a, uh, one of the best ways to get a speed up in Impala or any query engine really in, in Hadoop. Um, so if your data makes sense, to, makes sense to partition, a very common partitioning scheme is based on date and time. Uh, so if I'm writing a ton of data every day, I can write it into a year, month, day folder. And then Impala, you can actually say, I, I'm adding this partition, which is today. Next partition, which is tomorrow. Uh, and when you run a query, if you specify uh, like in the where clause, a predicate such as like year, month, or day, or maybe all three, it can use partition pruning. Um, so if you say, I only want to analyze data for 2014, not 2013, it will not read any of the 2013 data. It will only read 2014 data. So on that note, I was curious if you have any other suggestions around best practices for partitioning parquet files. So say we've got you know, time series event-based data uh, that we're throwing into a variety of different parquet file types and different event types. Mm -hmm. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so with Parquet, you wanna you wanna find a happy medium with partitions. Uh, you wanna find that medium where your file sizes are still kind of large. Uh, and by default in Impala, we recommend a, like a we actually override uh, the block size. Each file is a one gig block size. Um, so you want your partitions to have enough data where you actually start getting you have more than a gig of data in your partition. You don't want to have a bunch of small files and a bunch of partitions. Uh, that causes some overhead. Um, 
So you want to kind of find a medium. Like for example, if every day you write 100 megs of data or 100 or a gig of data, maybe instead of partitioning on year, month, day, you should just partition on year, month. And then you can kind of have a larger kind of data set. Question. Mm -hmm. You mentioned JSON. So it seems to me right now the data you can handle by your system is still kind of a row. Right now it's uh, more flat. So uh, very similar to a traditional database. You have, yeah. you have columns. You know. um, soon, right now you can do that in Hive. You can query data that's nested. Uh, but yeah, we're, we are soon going to support querying nested data in Impala. J JSON, very similar, yeah. JSON, which is inherently nested. You can do any level of nesting. Parquet, the file format itself, supports nesting already. Um, and it uses a algorithm um, uh, used by Google or defined by Google in that Dremel white paper, uh, which is like a shredded nested data algorithm that allows for a very efficient way of storing nested data and analyzing the nested data. It'll, it won't exactly flatten it. Well, it does kind of flatten it, but it uses, a, um, it uses an algorithm for very efficient ways of like either stepping over nested data or stepping into nested data. Question on the support of nested data in Parquet. Uh, Um, that I don't know the answer to. That's a good question. Yeah, I uh, I haven't tried that out yet. It's, I'll, I'll I'll let you know. Yeah. Yes. Um, well, you can actually run Impala on a single node if you want. Uh, but for a distributed query engine, you should have more than one. Uh, for HDFS, uh, the default replication factor of HDFS is three, meaning every block you write gets replicated two more times. And uh, so you should probably have a, at least three nodes right. to, to mess around with it. Yeah. Other questions? Good. Cool. All done. <laughs> Thanks.